Well, Red, we talked a little about your wonderful stay at Capri and how rested you must have felt when you came back to Pantanoa and it was back to the same damn business, I guess. In October, again, they were hitting Black Hammer, Vienna, and so forth. Yeah. And on October 17th, according to the records we have, Lieutenant Bill Lee, Ray Farquhar, and Bob Keller were shot down. That was you, They were flying a separate airplane from you guys, right? And yes. when, when you had got back from Capri, they had been lost. Can you tell what you heard about what happened to those guys and how it felt to lose those good old friends? I it seemed like someone told us when they, we got back a, a, at the Pantanella and some, uh, somebody just mentioned that they lost their crew, crew. Uh, the, while we were at, down in, at Capri the uh, officers kept right on flying with the pickup crews and so forth and apparently they, they picked up a, a crew that got shot down. So they're, 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 now we're back to the base, but we don't have we don't have our pilots, co-pilot, none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was a little bit leery, getting scared a little, getting, you know, because it could have been all of us. Sure. Yeah, just, I know that's how I felt in there. I don't know how the rest of them did. Yeah, and uh, and I understand from one of the records, uh, one of the accounts of that mission that, well, as we said, Lieutenant Lee was a guy to take care of his men, yeah. and he would have been the last one out of that airplane, and maybe that's why he didn't get out. Do you yeah, think that's yeah, what happened? Because he didn't he didn't get out of the aircraft at all. I don't as I understand. Uh, I don't know about the the if, if he had a bombardier or a navigator with him. I think he lost a, Na a Farquhar, a Ray Farquhar. But uh, the co-pilot, uh, the, uh, the fellow named Denny, he uh, was the only one that really survived. And he bailed out. And he was an intern taken prisoner, and he finished out the war there in, in the German prison camps. Mm -hmm. uh, the, his wife, uh, her name was Cleo, beautiful woman, a woman, you know. They were young kids, married. My mother and uh, his his mother, uh, his wife, I should say, in South Dakota, until the time he came home, released from the prisons and camps and all that, they corresponded to each other quite often. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, they saved up a lot of information for when you got home. Yeah. Now, I know people listening to this interview will notice that you guys thought a hell of a lot of Lieutenant Lee. Did, <laughs> did it make you angry? Did you want to get back up there and shoot the hell out of the enemy? Uh, what was your emotional reaction to losing such a good friend and a good pilot as that when the you heard only, about it? The only thought I had uh, at debriefing and there was, I don't know who he was, they were all officers. And he explained, it, at least to me, uh, that we had lost uh, Lieutenant Lee. He said they didn't think he ever uh, left the aircraft. The aircraft was shot down inside a wing or something off of it, and he followed, he had followed the, down to the ground with the, the, the uh, shot up airplane. And that's how I found it. It kind of, uh, you know, you hear things, but you don't want to believe it until the, the man himself tells you, now, okay, now you believe it. That he is, he's gone. One of the finest men you'll ever meet. He was a, and a good aircraft commander. And he took care of us, made sure we had a little talk now and then, how to act, you know, so forth. Mm -hmm. but, and we all liked him, never heard a word that ever said against him. Not one. Hmm. Fine man. So you guys, uh, Sergeant Dempsey, and you, and whoever else was left of your original crew, you were flying with different people now, but you spent some more missions with uh, one Captain Perkins. Okay. Tell us about Captain yeah. Perkins, what kind of a guy he was. He was another one. Captain Clyde Perkins, a young fellow from uh, from Kentucky. I don't know really where. Yep. But he was another one. He was slow-talking. One of those type, you know, he moved just about as fast as he talked. 
but he he was always in control. Everybody he knew exactly where everyone was at. He knew somehow he knew uh, he, right in the middle of uh, shells going off all all around. He he he, he checks around. You fellas in the back okay? What's wrong? Anything back there? Same thing up this nose of gear, you know. And he, just that kind of a fella. And here he's sitting up there. He's he's really the only one you know. That's, that's, he's, he he can't do nothing but fly against the other aircraft. He can't he can't see a being shot at or anything like that. Sure. It takes a lot of nerve to just keep calm under conditions like that. But it does. My uh, my dad, Sergeant Dempsey, mentioned that he also, as you say, he felt very thought very highly of Captain Perkins. He said that you guys had two close calls. Do you remember the worst incidents? What were the most difficult things when you were flying with Perkins? So you were flying against Munich, Linz, Vienna, back to Blackhammer again. Yeah. How did the, how did the rest of your missions go? Were there some tough moments? I, I know there was for me. Uh, I, I, but once I, we got an aircraft such as Captain, uh, now he was Captain Perkins, uh, like he's there, but he's the only officer I know with a bunch. And the same way with the enlisted men. I, I don't know, didn't know anybody on there. Mm -hmm. But your duties never change. So at least I knew enough to keep busy as much as I could uh, because I didn't that way no, I didn't want to be sitting around thinking about it or worrying about getting shot down and it worked uh, well that way I don't know about the other guys but that, for me that worked real well sure. trying to get it uh, we used to say you know I used to tell them oh, I got a, a little speed ticket from old Perk you know this play it cool and he was right every time. Great man. Into February, January, February, I understand that uh, the groups that you were with, they weren't doing too many missions in January because the weather was so bad. But into February, February 5th, you hit Regensburg. My dad, Sergeant Dempsey's last mission was February 23rd uh, against Klagenfurt. What do you remember of your last few missions? Did you feel as though, gee, I'm almost to my 50 missions required? Uh, were you just more nervous with every mission now? Or? No, by this time, uh, Demps and, and uh, Fenero, they were all, they already finished up their missions. It was coming back to the States. I was still there. I had a little occasion to be in the hospital, and they kept me over there for a week. I got so I could walk and go back with but now I got to make a, I don't remember how many missions behind I was, I don't have the slightest idea. Mm. I, maybe, I, no, I don't, because I don't remember the exact dates. So, but I had then this, again, fly some pickup crews for the last maybe, maybe five, six missions. Mm -hmm. And up in that lens and style, uh, 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 that, that, that was one of my, I hated that black hammer and so yeah. forth. So I, I got, finally got, so the last couple of missions there, I got to fly with the uh, wing commander, uh, Colonel Schroeder. So that, I felt kind of safe. <laughs> he's there, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's how I finished up. And he, him being a nice fella, uh, on my last mission, uh, he had the Red Cross ladies that uh, had a truck, you know, and they had little sandwiches and pop and stuff like that come to meet me, you know, and I got to have a free pop and all that. Mm -hmm. Real nice. Mm -hmm. uh, they did take pictures, but I, I never did bother. I, go, I didn't think about going and getting some of them, you know. Never dawned on me. Mm -hmm. I was glad. Glad to get it over with. And how did it feel when you finished your required missions, when you knew that you were going to be able to get on a boat and get the hell out of their home? Uh, what do you remember your feelings? Were you sad to leave the base at all? Did you say, get to say goodbye to anybody? Or? 
No, but by this time I didn't hardly know anybody. I see. Uh, all the crews, so many of the crews have changed. Even the ground crews, they didn't, they got they got to relieve every now and then. Rotate. I don't think there's it was as long as short as ours were. If we could get the missions in, uh, sometimes they could do that in maybe 90 days or so. But that's that's dangerous to try to get that. Even the ground crews there to get theirs. But I, I don't know how did I feel. I really can't describe it. I just don't know. I know I was glad to have it. That it's over with. And it was. They don't just come and get you and put you in the vehicle and take you down to Naples and put you on the ship. I had to wait until a ship came into Naples. They had thousands of guys to get off of there. And I guess then they had to go clean the whole entire ship from one end to the other. Now we can do it. So it was about a week later, and I, there was, we had a, a truckload of a six by, uh, military six by, and it was full with benches along each side. And we all went down there and, and uh, stayed. We, honestly, they had to, to keep us near the uh, ship. So, so we could load it without much trouble. We were we were quartered in the old uh, horse race track, and where them horses used to be, that's where we had our cops in there. Hmm. But it was good. Who cared? You know, everything was rosy because he was going home, mm -hmm. and we stayed there for I think it was four days. I stayed, and we got on the ship one day, and then left. We left the next day. And that was the USS Mariposa. It used to be, I was told of one of the sailors that that ship was all used for years from San Francisco area, or at least it's California area, to the Hawaiian lines, all back and forth. Taking, taking the people to get what for release as a pressure, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and how they got it over there in the, to the, that ocean, I don't know. But it was a uh, real nice. Got on, got on there, got off in the uh, uh, near Boston. It stayed. We stayed about a day or two there. Always paperwork to make out, you know. And then from there, uh, I, I went back to Illinois. And wouldn't you know it? I got I got into Chicago, and I took a bus down to uh, Peoria, Illinois, mm -hmm. and because I was familiar with it, I knew at Peoria I'd change the bus to go to Pekin, Illinois, and then on to my home in San Jose, Illinois. I got on the bus just fine in Peoria, and it's coming that back towards uh, Pekin, Illinois to go down to my home town and boy all of a sudden my stomach started hurting. Before I, we got to Pekin I was hurting real bad and the bus driver stopped near some uh, bus station thing you know and went inside and the next thing you know here comes the guys out they had a taxi put me in the taxi took me out to the local hospital and they had to operate on me for appendicitis and never even got home. Wow. And uh, my my father was quite a, uh, you know, he liked to tell stories and so forth. And how he ever got up there to, we never owned a car in his life. How he got up to from, from our hometown, and he had my little sister with him. And he was going to go down there and see me. And the nurse told me, I told him, I said, sir, I'm sorry, uh, you, you can't take the child down, they're not child lied in the hospital. He just turned around and said, what do you mean, this isn't a child, this is my wife, she's a midget, and just kept right on work, walk, walking, you know, well, right now, got into a room too. <laughs> he was quite a character.